Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Karen Rice and I'm going to be demonstrating a step-by-step -step acrylic painting of a bowl of cherries. I'm going to be taking you through the basics of how to paint an acrylic painting and this video is suitable for beginners and improvers. To start with, I've primed the surface of my mount board, which is approximately A4 size, with acrylic gesso and I've put some framing tape around the edge and I've let this dry. Once the gesso is dry, I've actually put a thin wash of crimson with a large flat brush over the top. I've used lovely broad strokes to give some nice texture to the background. You can use any colour for the background. The reason for this layer is to give some good tonal values to the rest of my painting. Once you finish painting this, let it These dry. These are most of the materials that I'll be using. I'm using Winsor & Newton Galleria acrylic. They're a sort of a student grade of acrylic. I'm using a Liquitex yellow and I'm also going to be using some white paint. And to the right I have a homemade Stay Wet palette which I will explain about later and a few very well used flat brushes. Details about the materials I'm using will be in the description below. To access the description, either click on the down arrow as you can see in the photograph there or click on show more and it will take you straight to the description. In the description I have Amazon links where you can purchase most of the materials that I'll be using in this video. So let's get started. Acrylics dry very quickly so to stop that from happening I'm making a homemade stay wet palette. You can use any size but I've got a little plastic box here. I put some kitchen towel in there and I've wet it with water and then I'm putting some grease proof or parchment paper on top and there's something called osmosis where once you squeeze the paints on top the moisture from the kitchen towel will be released and it will keep the paints from drying out. I've drawn a simple outline drawing with white paint using my liner brush. So I've squeezed out my paints, I've got some yellow, I've got some crimson, burnt sienna, van dyke brown and prussian blue. Also be adding violet and white later. So I'm starting off, I'm mixing some of the prussian blue, I'm adding a smidge of white, and it's just sort of showing you the colour mixing here. I'm using a flat half inch brush and I'm just sort of catching the paint at the corner of the brush so it allows me to do these separate colour mixes. I've got about three or four there. Now I'm laying the colour now on that dry background, loading the brush. I always love to colour mix and get lots of different shades. And as you can see, I use my wrist and I like to get different angles. And I'm just cutting in now to the cherries and the leaves and just taking my time, loading my brush, varying the colours. What you don't want to do with acrylic is to stretch the paint too far. So always keep loading your brush, painting the paint on and then moving on to another patch. Don't over blend because the paint kind of breaks down and it actually looks so much better when you work this way, a lot fresher. So just keep loading that paint and sweeping that background colour on. So I'm mixing up some colours for the foreground. So I'm adding some red to the Prussian blue. You get a lovely warm dark. And I'm painting that colour on onto the dry surface with a, my large flat one inch brush so I can get some really nice broad strokes. Remember, be generous with that paint. Keep loading that brush. I'm painting the dish now and I'm using some of the dark that I used in the foreground. I've swapped my half inch brush and I'm going to just paint the darts on the right hand side. I've added a little bit of the burnt sienna now just to lighten things up on the left hand side and to warm things up. So I've added a touch of red as well. I love colour mixing in acrylics. I love touching little bits of colour here and there to change things up. The other thing that's nice about it is I'm getting some lovely textured marks with the brush and the acrylic paint on this lovely dish. Okay, onto the cherries now. I'm using the Prussian blue with a touch of the red and I'm just, it sort of makes a dark purpley colour. Prussian blue is a lovely dark. I'm painting these wet on dry and I'm just sort of forming the very first darks on these cherries. 
I'm using the half inch brush and what I try to do is I try to show the planes of the cherry so you're trying to get the sort of the surface of it so I, I let my brush go in different directions to show the kind of the way the cherries are rounded and I'm just swapping in little bits of reds and blues and just varying the colours. So I've mixed up some Prussian blue and yellow and I'm just painting in these leaves here. They're nice and simple which is great if you see from the reference photograph it's it's just lovely and simple and I'm just using the yellow and the blue half inch flat wet on dry. So I've allowed the painting to dry always dry your acrylic between layers and I'm painting now a, a deeper purple with the Prussian blue some Van Dyke brown and red really sort of vary these darks don't make all your darks the same color really give it a lots of variety i've now mixed a little bit of white my prussian blue and the touch of brown and i'm just putting some lovely broad strokes into the background you can use your large flat one inch or your half inch for this and you can blend it with your fingers as well just to get that paint looking quite smooth in the background so the thing with acrylics is you work dark to light so I put on all the dark tones on that first stage I'm now putting on some sort of mid tones so I'm using a bit of red with a bit of the violet and just making it a little bit lighter here and there so these are kind of mid tones and I'm just putting on little dashes with my flat brush mixing up and varying the colors again using the red using some of the burnt sienna even a touch of yellow if you really look at the reference photograph there's so many delicious colors and tones in those cherries it's so wonderful to paint and remember to vary the directional marks of your brush to show the planes of the actual surface of those cherries my biggest tip to beginners is dark to light large to small highlights and details leave them to last and try to let your painting dry between each stage that should immediately improve your acrylic painting so as you can see I'm continuing on putting on my mid to light tones now especially on this dish concentrating on the left hand side I've used burnt sienna touch of red touch of yellow and I'm using a slightly lighter green now just to put oh there is a little dash of yellow it's amazing what a little bit of light will do I'm just putting a touch more dark now just underneath this dish really to just build up because sometimes the darks fade off so just really kind of just put a few more darks on if you find that they have faded off a bit and I'm just using a touch now of the violet a little touch of white touch of red just putting some of these more violet colors on those cherries there's some beautiful colors there with all those different highlights and different shades so you can really have fun with that just using a little bit of violet and red a bit of burnt sienna just to put a few more marks in the foreground just to build up that detail I've just mixed up now some of the red and the yellow and I'm just putting in some of these half highlights. Try not to use any white at this stage, hold off on the white. So I'm using this half inch brush and I'm getting lovely fresh acrylic paint. Just putting these lovely highlights of so different colours on the left side of the cherries, putting different marks little dots, little, you know, just really looking at the reference photographs and try to emulate that. And I'm just putting a little bit of the burnt sienna now, the touch of yellow on the left hand side, metal dish using the half inch brush, really trying to capture the texture. Remember these are the lighter tones now, we're, we're going from dark to light. So I've just mixed up a lighter purple tone there using the violet, touch of the red, now with a touch of white and just putting that a little bit on the right hand side we've got some lovely sort of purple highlights so I'm just trying to find them and pick them out and I'm going now with a lighter tones again this more warmer orangey color of highlights so I'm still steering away from the white to give my painting real depth I've let my painting dry and now I'm going to build up a little bit more of the darks here because sometimes again I said earlier they fade off a little bit in acrylics I just want to give my painting a little bit of oomph a lot of the darks are underneath the cherries and to the right hand side so I'm just sort of painting those in and also on the right hand side of this dish just putting a few more marks in I'm just putting in a few more 
warmer tones here again to the right hand side just really trying to get everything together before I finish off with the highlights my painting has dried and I put a fresh piece of baking sheet or parchment paper on the bottom half of my little mixing palette and I'm just going to paint now I'm going to use that for my highlights so I'm mixing up some white some red and some violet just to put those colors in there so it's not completely white it's say it's sort of colorful highlights here and I'm just placing them in here and there try to vary the shapes really look at the shapes on the reference photograph they're all sort of what I love looking at highlights because they're all these magical shapes because they're picking up the lights from whatever lights are above in the room so you can really have fun studying that and just putting those marks on some are a bit cooler some are a bit warmer so you might want to add a little bit of yellow a little bit of the burnt sienna with some white I'm even getting a little bit of the blue there to make a sort of a dull gray neutral highlight here and there I've swapped to a quarter inch brush and I just want to use that now because I'm getting into the highlights and the details. So I'm really being picky here because this will really bring the cherries out. You'll start to see them for cherries and not for these just dark blobs. So that really brings them to life. And I'm trying to really resist doing too much. Less is more. I've swapped to my size three liner brush so I can get these sort of more circular little dots and highlights here and there and it'll just give me a different feel and the marks will be a little bit smaller. just using this warm highlight now to paint the edge of the dish a really important part actually because it really will make the cherries look like they're inside that dish and I'm just concentrating those highlights on the left hand side with this liner brush just putting these sparkly highlights on remember it's white with a touch of yellow the reason why I've moved my palette is because I want to make these lovely sweeping marks with my brush and I didn't want the palette to be in the way now here you really have to resist doing too much you've done all these darks now you just want to put these highlights on it will just make it look like what it's supposed to be in the reference photograph it'll all come to life so I'm actually now just putting pure white on really these are the very last highlights you should be doing I've just smudged a little bit on the right hand side because there's a you can see a little bit of light there but you don't want to bring it forward too much it is in a shadow area just putting a few more little highlights on these leaves now using yellow with a touch of blue try not to do too much because you don't want to bring those leaves forward too much I'm just going to paint the apple stems in now just with a mid green the yellow and the blue I love the way those two crisscross don't make too much of a fuss of these you want to put them in simply not too much information it, they really work by treating them as simple as you can I put a few more little warmer little tones on there just at the end of them just to give that little bit more information without overdoing it just painting a few more little highlights to the left just because it's metallic and I want it to make it really sing so I'm just pop those in there and a few more of those little highlights on the cherries just to really bring them to life I think I'll leave it there for now I'm removing my framing tape I'm quite pleased with this little painting here it is finished I do hope you've enjoyed this demonstration teaching you how to sort of create a stay wet palette using a limited palette painting dark to light 
building up this painting until you get your final highlights. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please put them in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you'd like to see more videos like this, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll get updates of my latest videos. Thanks again for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.